Good evening, friends. Your host, Amit Singh Atwal, live from Riyatanbara University Mohali campus. Welcome to my viewers, my colleagues, students of the university, and the guest. And also welcome my speaker. Today we are on a webinar, an interesting topic after this COVID pandemic, and we all are thinking of this the future workplace in India to discuss and to share his views with me today, Mr. S. N. Rao, Head Campus Sourcing, British Telecom, India. He has a rich experience of 17 years in HR recruitments. He has served many MNCs, India's top IT companies he served like Wipro, TCS, he served East and North India head for Vipro's technologies for a long time. I think at that moment only I met Mr. S. N. Rao. Welcome S. N. Rao ji. Few things before starting, uh, I want to share about him. He enjoys playing sports, shaping the lives of young generation. That is most important. Parallelly, he is on the advisory board of renowned universities in India. In addition, he also served in the board of Sarasta, an organization which works towards the rehabilitation of children of sexually exploited children. He is a good orator, a good speaker, a motivation speaker. Welcome, S. N. Rauji. Thank you, Amit. Uh, it's a Pleasure to be here this afternoon, and uh, I'm I'm hoping that we'll have a wonderful time together here. Thanks, Samit. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Sir, your topic is really interesting about the future workplace in India. I uh, I just need a one-line brief before handing over this uh, entire webinar to you, sir. Yeah, the topic is absolutely you know intriguing. Uh, the future workplace. Uh, the question that that poses before us is who knows what is the future looking to be like? So the, the key here what I feel and that's what I'm going to be looking at is how do we deal with ambiguity? How do we navigate ourselves to this? So if you look through right now, it's a very difficult scenario, but like they say, there's always in you know, a morning right after the night. Okay, from this point, I hand over entire webinar to SN Rauji. Essence, sir, for you. Thank you, Amit. One more time. It's my joy and privilege to be here this afternoon. Uh, to everybody that's listening to me live at this point in time, I want to thank you for taking the opportunity and the time and that you have come here. Uh, let me tell you that uh, all of us are facing very difficult and unprecedented times in our lives. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today is what's the future of workplace in India? Uh, how are we going to manage walking through the ambiguity? And one of the key skills that we always have is to understand through ambiguity, through this whole thing about not knowing what we are to expect in times to come, arises something that's always wonderful. You know, like they say, har raat ke baad ek subah hoti hai. So when we look at this entire aspect, I think personally, and this is my views personally, there are a lot of things that we can look at. What does the... Uh, if if the, and the best part is that there is no prescribed manual that is written so far. Nobody can predict what the world is going to be looking like once we are through with the so-called monster called COVID at this point in time. And so when we come to a platform like this, it is important for us to have our thoughts absolutely geared towards something which is very meaningful, something that's going to help each other. And like I rightly said, we are facing the greatest disruption of our lifetime. The world has never seen anything like this. All right. And, and the past few months have really challenged all of our assumptions. And for the work is the business models, the workflows, the technology, but most importantly, the people. And therefore, it poses a question in front of us. It says the future scenarios and the projected health and the economic impacts that are changing drastically on a daily basis that you and I can see today, 
are leading the organizations as to scramble and pull together the best that they can put together. And when we talk about people, let's let me tell you one thing for sure, for sure that people are unique. No two people are similar. And therefore, there are no two problems that are similar. What what we are doing as an organization today is is, is that and all the organizations predominantly are they are scrambling to pull together their best people as guides to find out the way of where this current chaos is going to lead us. Now, when you look at that, it tells us two things, that the entire human resources part is now becoming more as human relations. Let me repeat that. Human resources is now becoming human relations. Because if you cannot understand, empathize, and sympathize with a person who's been your colleague, who's going through a rough time, then let me tell you, uh, you cannot build your organization. But having said that, the, the, the leadership per se and all the functions of the leadership are under extreme pressure, not only to develop leaders within the organization this time who's going to lead us through this crisis situation, but also we have to respond proactively to the new challenges that we are facing. Every day, there is a constant new challenge. Let me give you an example. The role that I am in today, my role is managing people. However, at my level, I have seen it's not about just managing people. It's about managing the well-being of each and every team member. And my team members, my colleagues, people that I work with, my, my team, I know one thing for sure that all of us think alike. We care for each other. Now, because of the disruption, here is an opportunity that we have to reset the way leadership development and the function of the leadership development is viewed in a very different way. The lenses must change. The lenses must change without any biases and prejudices. Why? Because, like I said, every life matters. And we've seen those campaigns recently, a lot of what's happening across the world, Black Lives Matter, and then there's Every Life Matters. And true, every life matters. You know, when you talk about leadership, when you talk about the workplace, really, that has led, there are a lot of myths and a lot of urban legends, as they say. And they say that sometimes we, people, Indian, Asians, we're not ready to handle global leadership crisis. We are okay when it comes about attending classroom-based programs, uh, you know, and, and that will make us better leaders, really. That'll help us to become people that are skilled, you know, in, in the line of work that we do. But what's more important is how impactful is your role? How impactful is it really when you face development such as this face-to-face -face every day? So if organizations hold on to these relics, they will struggle to develop what you call as a human relations and not just a human resource. It's quite fast paced. It's absolutely new. It's completely at this point in time, uh, I would say not even gray area. Nobody knows. There is no manual. There is no prescribed how to do kind of step by step manual that tells you how you're supposed to fight this this moment of uncertainty. So what do we do? So much so it's a fact that even once we are done with this and you that are students that are listening to me today, there might be a lot of questions that are in your mind to save the time I go into the world. What is my world going to be like? What is this going to be looking like? Am I as an individual? Am I going to be respected? Am I as a person? You know, when I go out with my skills and whatever, you know, uh, degrees that I make and degrees, don't get me wrong, degrees are very important. But let me tell you, degrees alone will not take you to where you want to go. And so the question that stands before us as always is, what is the future of the workplace in India? Let me tell you a couple of things. You know, when we look at the future of workplace in India, we are all going through a lot of ambiguity. 
So then how do we handle this? I want to talk to you a couple of things that I see today, which are very, very important for us as we move ahead to understand how we are to handle this current scenario and to ensure that we together make an impact, not just for us today, people like us today, but also in the generations that are coming. So when I looked at this really, and I looked at what are the myths that we have debunked, what are some of the things that we'd have to rid ourselves from, I found a few things. And before I tell you that the two parts to what I'm going to say, I'm going to talk about basically tell you how you are supposed to be looking at uh, in terms of how you're going to be ready, what's the next world going to be looking like once the COVID is over. And I want to tell you that through this COVID, what is it that you are to do that will keep you going and come make you alive and make you somebody who's ready for the future workplace? That's how I'm going to divide what I have to share with you. The first thing, uh, when I went and I did a little bit of, of uh, looking back, soul searching, as you say, to understand what are we going to do, really, there are a few things that I think, and you know, for you that are on the college, uh, and I know that, that, you know, when the campus season comes, everybody, and by the way, like Amit said, um, I come at least with 10 to 11 years of experience of handling campus folks across the length and breadth of the country. God's been good to me to allow that, uh, you know, experience in my life. So here's what I think is going to happen. I see four top hiring trends that are emerging. And when I say hiring trends, that directly says the kind of people that we will need in the world that is coming. First thing that I see, you know, as you know, that, that the traditional hiring formats have changed. Today, we're all looking at the huge word called as everything is virtual today. You know, I, I don't know if you realize or not right now, wherever you are and I'm in my home, uh, I'm right now in your, you know, into your home, into your room, wherever you are. And along with that, everybody else is watching right now is where you are. That's the power of technology. Like they say, while the world is getting connected, the people are getting disconnected. So there are a lot of changes that we have to bring to connect the people back. And so what are the few trends that we're looking at? There's a huge challenge. Everything has gone virtual. Virtual hiring is something which is there are a lot of, a lot of people selling solutions, how you're supposed to be hiring. And definitely the usage of AI, artificial intelligence, and we are virtual uh, you know, uh, reality technology is really increasing. You know, even at our organization in BT, we moved to virtual hiring uh, a long time back, and, and it's been very effective. It's been really nice. And I think, what is it that we need uh, to ensure that there is a holistic experience for every individual? There are a few things that I feel are very important. Is that how do we build our employee value proposition, which means bringing in the right culture, the right purpose, the flexibility to work remotely and still taking center stage. There are a few things that I've spoken about as I read, as I mentioned this to you. You see, today the workplace is no longer contained by boundary. We are boundaryless. The boundaries have suddenly expanded. All right. What used to be normal is no longer normal. There's a new word called the new normal. But I'm still trying, I'm still starting to understand what is the new normal who is what is the right definition of new normal and so adaptability is so very very important you know when you go virtual there are certain things which are very important you have to understand the likes and likes of dislikes of so many people what is the culture what kind of culture as an organization are you going to show to the person who is a prospective candidate for you what is the kind of purpose that you give out to them, that you hand out to them? The flexibility to work remotely. You know, today, uh, and I was talking to somebody else a couple of days back, and here's what I said of my all these days, years of my experience, I could, I could never honestly 
go to a meeting room and talk about what you did last night in terms of how you helped kitch, you know, uh, cleaning the floors of the house, sweeping or swabbing or washing dishes or uh, doing things at home. Those were not what, what men like us in jackets and suits spoke about. But today, it's the new normal. You know, on our calls, we talk about how we've helped people. What have we done differently? And I see on Facebook, oh my goodness, there are so many people that men that proudly show off the kind of cakes that they have made, what they have baked over the weekend. That's a new normal. And in that way, in that way, really, it sets up the culture that we are about to see today in time to come. I don't know when we're going to go back to office. It's a long time. Some people say that, we're going to peak in November. Some say that India is going to peak in the month of February. I, 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 I haven't laid my hand on uh, as yet on something that I can say, yeah, this is the right answer. But I, but I, one thing I know for sure is it's going to be quite a while. So in that, in that time, how do we hold on to each other while we have the flexibility to work remotely? How do we still bring in the same culture and the same purpose? That's an important question to think about. How do we bring in the same culture and the same purpose? You know, one of the things that you have to understand really is when you talk about culture is that in your organization, there are several people who come from various different backgrounds. How do you make all of them think alike? And I'm saying this, keeping in mind that the future workplace, this is one of the skills which is absolutely important. How do you become inclusive? And inclusive, I just don't mean, uh, you know, talking about the various things that we talk about, diversity and inclusion. That's separate. But I'm saying in nature, to your colleagues at work, that's very important, bringing in diversity and inclusion in your workplace. I mean, I'm a champion. I, I believe, uh, I believe that's, a, that's a wonderful cause for all of us to champion, really. But having said that, the important thing, don't forget, is there are your colleagues. There are your people. How are you being able to manage them? How are you being able to tell them that you matter to me and I care about you? That's a very, very important question. The culture and the purpose. You know, when you have several other people doing several things in their own locations, in their own home, sometimes, you know, in an office, you have that time, one o'clock, let's go for lunch here. You don't do that. You're at your own. But how is it that you're able to bring that purpose across? One purpose, one vision, one goal. It's a huge demand. It's a huge task that for the leaders and the organizations, we have to undertake this and look at it from a very close perspective because understand this is your future workplace and this is what it demands third i think is that a, is it a future workplace will demand that there is a diversity in skill sets and experiences and we have to go beyond the traditional narrow requirements going by the JD should have this skill. And I always tell the college students uh, always, and I share this with you that are probably in your final year and you want to go ahead. I always, I've always been talking about this. What is it that makes you different from your other colleague in your class? How are you different? All of you are going to have the same degree. You will pass out. And I hope that you are starting to do that. But then what is next? How do you move from there? What is it that's going to make you different? You know, looking things through the traditional lens is not going to help us. We have to change the traditional lens with the progressive lens now to look at things not just now, but in the future course of time. And when you do that, and when you deal with that, when you bring in the diverse skill set, one of the most important things that you need to have is is called is the word called as resilience how strong are you you will face ambiguous situations you will face things that you don't know how are you going to manage it so i remember the old time there was a, a boxer and if you heard of this boxer called muhammad ali muhammad ali was once asked when he was going to fight george foreman he was asked tell me 
which is the punch that you fear the most and here's what muhammad ali said muhammad ali said the punch that i don't see coming is the one that i fear the most the one that i don't see coming is the one that i fear the most my friends that are hearing me today how resilient are you to face the situations that you are unaware of the second thing that i think is very important talking about diversity and skill set is adaptability how are you adapting to something new something different for a long many many years i was used to waking up early on a on a monday morning no matter uh, uh, no matter the fact remains that all of us don't quite like mondays anybody here who likes mondays not many people for sure but yes when you when a monday morning comes in all of us discontinuously go we get up but that's the routine when you sit in your car when you drive off and you go to your office you go to your college and you see your first friend the first moment gives you a moment of just hey hi and they're lovely but we've suddenly been robbed of that joy we're at our homes not that our homes are bad place homes are good place to stay by the way all right family is always a good place, good a good set of people to stay around with but we've been suddenly asked to adapt to something that we've never done in our life we've never done it in our life adaptability how do you adapt how do you make yourself adaptable to something that you've not done that's a huge ask but somehow we have been doing it i never thought in my entire life that i'm going to do a webinar sitting in from one of the rooms in my home i never thought that i'm going to do it but this is a new norm and this is how adaptability is all about the third thing that i think is very important is the ability to manage ambiguity and like i said to do something that you don't know it's ambiguous in nature you've not gone there you've not done it and that can only happen when you have a risk taking appetite now risk taking appetite doesn't mean that i behave foolishly even when you take risk take calculated risk know that if i go from here point a to point b these are the possible things that can happen but if this happens this is what i need to do and you know what i when i was looking at this i must tell you this very interesting thing that when you took about dealing with ambiguity or the ability to manage ambiguity one of the things that you need to have is you need to know yourself because if you don't know yourself if you don't trust yourself if you don't relish your own self you will never be in a position to take the risk you will always fear you will always think is this what i'm doing is the right thing and the fourth thing that i think is agility agility we don't so there was a time that i would always say even to my team i keep telling them that the way we've evolved the way the business is evolving is there was a time when we had a lot of time to commit mistakes the trial and error method okay uh, in recruitment if you don't find the right person you say okay this guy is a 60 70% fit let me give this guy see what the hiring manager has to say let's look at what the panel say perhaps he's okay uh, maybe they'll compromise oh no 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 the demands have changed completely the landscape of demands have changed the landscape of businesses has changed all of that has changed and therefore people who were you know did now you now if i may say you you're now like a sharp shooter every bullet counts and therefore every effort counts every opportunity counts how are you managing the opportunity that you get and let me tell you another big key to all of this is definitely going to be soft skills see today if you see you are in wherever you are i am wherever what i am and we are doing this webinar and if i'm not able to make sense to you if i'm not being able to reach across to you then i'm a failure but to be a success i need to be able to put my thoughts across i need to be able to communicate in a way where i'm able to reach to you and to your understanding i need to match your expectations i need to match what your understanding is 
soft skills resilience adaptability ability to manage ambiguity agility soft skills i want to ask you today what are you doing to enhance these there's one more thing that i want to put across i remember i was talking to you about four pillars really first i spoke to you about the the, uh, the you know the whole about how traditionally we we have we moved into different formats now virtually we are doing things the first thing i spoke about ai vr a uh, quick quick recap two i spoke about how are we able to redefine our purpose our culture our flexibility and ability to work remotely and yet taking center stage the third thing i spoke about four key skills which i think are resilience adaptability ability to manage ambiguity agility and soft skills and fourth that i'm going to talk about is there are a lot of capabilities that are required in the new workplace that's going to be the future of the workplace the four capabilities i'm looking at is like digital everything is digital now with digital comes cyber security the moment you say cyber security and you say digital and you say virtual data analytics these are a few skills and capabilities that i think is going to be is will rule the future workplace let me give you an example as to why data is so important now most of us when we go to a place when we go to a new place or we go to a birthday party or whatever what do we do we take out our cameras like this right and what do we do we pause we pout and then we post pause pout and post but do you know after that what happens you are making the world know where you are and imagine the amount of data over a period of time there are a lot of companies that are tracking you as you go they are building what we call as a digital footprint and every footprint gets converted into data and every set of data that has accumulated over a period of time is analyzed and out of the analysis of the data of your behavior of the restaurants you go to of the places you travel of the kind of people that you are with the kind of destinations that you go to you will see basis that assumptions are made or analysis is created about you as an individual to see who are you that's what it does and so increasingly when everything else goes based on virtually all of our activities go virtual can you for a moment imagine the amount of data that's out there to be analyzed so we need a lot of people who are interested in building their key skills into analyzing data so i've spoken about few pillars that i think is is what is required in the future of the workplace i also will not be i think it's not going to be right if i don't talk to you a little bit about what are you supposed to be doing to ensure that as you pass through this phase and get ready for the future workplace and i've already shared with you what is it that is required in the time to come and how you are supposed to keep updating yourself keep building yourself i also want to talk about five pillars that i feel are the key pillars to the well-being of you as an individual now, one of the key things for you to sail through this covid is your mental and physical well-being so let me allow me to talk to you very quickly about what are the five pillars that you think which you which i believe if you do on a day to day basis as an individual it will improve your mental health and well being and will build your resilience remember i spoke to you about resilience the first pillar i want to say is it's called connections or connect how are you connecting with people how are you connected as a network you know they say 
uh, one of the key things that you must always remember is connections or when you build that connections, it, it is like you need to see it as investing in a relationship. See your connections or your relations as a healthy bank balance. And build up so much that in the time of trouble, you're able to fish out. It's, a, it's an ideal scenario for you to credit yourself from the ones that you care about. And so when the time comes, you are able to make the sufficient withdrawals from that bank account which you've invested in that word called relationships. So connect. Connect with people around you. Connect with the family, with friends, with colleagues, or with your neighbors. Connect. Connect with people not only that are within your reach, but try and reach out to people that are above your reach. The second pillar is about being active. One of the things that I see that being at home, all of us are, uh, and I see to some degree, we become very lazy. If you are, if you're not in a very good mood, go for a walk. It doesn't harm you. But yeah, put your masks on for sure. Why is it important for you to stay active? It is important for you to stay active because a healthy mind gives way to a healthy body and a healthy body gives, my, gives way or paves the way for a healthy mind. So whatever little exercise that you can do, go ahead. And, and, and I think YouTube is flooded with how you can keep yourself absolutely ready and agile. Second thing is be active. Dance, you know, do some yoga, walk around, talk, meet people. Uh, avoid handshakes for definitely. The third thing I want to talk to you about is about take notice. Taking notice. Are you as an individual whose mind is geared towards taking notice? The other word for taking notice would be be mindful. Are you mindful of the things around you? Are you somebody who takes time to look what's around you? You know, sometimes we get into this whole urgency of just answering a call. Sometimes let it ring. It doesn't harm. Let it ring. Take a breath. Breathe really well. Pick up. If you're cooking, if you're making your tea and you're boiling the kettle, on, or, you, know, uh, you know, the water on the kettle, breathe. Take it easy. Take notice. Be mindful. Be curious. There's a lot of beauty around us. Get hold of that beauty. And, and the best way to do is one of the good things, you know, that God has given us is these eyes. And eyes work better than a lot of cameras. The picture that the eye clicks and submits to the memory stays far longer and beyond any picture can stay. Take notice. Be mindful. And then after that, I want to talk to you about keep learning. Now, I told you about some of the skills which are very, very important. Keep learning. Now, when you say learning, let me tell you this very important thing that I must share with you is when you talk about be, keep on, keep, you know, come to the point of keep on learning. Somebody said like this, never let formal education get in the way of your learning. Mark Twain says that. Mark was a beautiful author. And uh, here's what he said Never let your formal education get in the way of your learning. Why is it important to keep on learning? If, if the world is evolving, if the future workplace is evolving at such a fast pace, how are you evolving? If you don't match step to step with the rapid movements and the changes, believe you me, you're going to be taking a step back. There is a numerous benefits to keep on learning. You know, there is something called as the brain muscle. Exercise that. Keep that exercising. Learning increases the volumes of the brain. It fights boredom. Learning increases speed. Improves your creativity, your memory, and so much more. Keep learning. Try something new. Rediscover an old interest. 
sign up for something that you've never done before. Even if it's for three, four, five months, I don't know, but do it, learn it. Don't shy away from learning something new. Be curious. Make your mind a lifelong learning platform. Keep on learning. And then lastly, very, very important in these days, give. Give. You know, the word give has so many meanings in today's time and age. I'm going to ask you, have you done something new for your friend, your neighbor, maybe a stranger? Uh, you know, a lot of times we keep doing good and sometimes we get weary of doing good. We get tired of doing good. And somebody said that there's a no act of kindness, however small it is, is ever wasted. No act of kindness, no matter how small it is, is ever wasted. Aesop said that. Every day build in a behavior of, act, be, of doing something or being kind to somebody. Maybe a kind word, a kind gesture, a kind behavior. Because let me tell you, especially as we are cordoned off today, we live in a separate ways, all of us together. Remember one thing for sure. It's the kindness that will help you redefine human relations. Never has been human relation tested so much like it has been today. Check out on your friends. You know, you have your phone number. There was a time when we used to pick up the phone and you say, anybody, we will just dial the number like this on the dial pad and we would call. Today, I want to ask you how many of your friends' numbers do you know without looking at the phone? How many? There is so much that you can do. And, and, and when you inculcate this behavior into yourself, when you bring this behavior into yourself, I can tell you one thing for sure, that you will be making a difference. You will go far beyond your degree. Your degree will have one skill. It's your, it's, it's your uh, learning. But these learnings that you will have will take you far beyond what you and I can ever imagine. I want to close with a small illustration. Uh, there was a bird by the name of Chirpy. Chirpy, as you know, means very being very gleeful, very happy. And so Chirpy, the bird, would always sing around. And Chirpy, by the way, was a parrot. And he would always sing in front of his master. One day, Chirpy's master was using the vacuum cleaner. And suddenly, what he does is uh, he's cleaning and suddenly the phone rings. And by the time he wants to pick, pick, pick up the phone to say hello, by that time, the vacuum cleaner in his hand goes to a Chucky and Chucky is suck suddenly sucked inside. And, and, and he realizes, oh, my God, Chucky is sucked in. So he suddenly puts the, the, you know, the phone down and he takes Chucky out of the, the vacuum cleaner back full of dust. And Chucky is coughing struggling to even breathe and so the good master that he is suddenly oh my god this is chucky and so what he does is he takes chucky quickly runs in to the bathroom and opens the tap and lets the water fall on chucky and the water was cold and chucky was shivering almost going to die realizing that chucky is almost there oh my goodness he's, he's gonna die of cold this is really sad what's gonna happen he quickly rushes again to the bathroom, takes off the hot air gun that he used to pull, you know, to dry our hair, the hair dryer, takes it, points it at Chucky, and goes and watch. And by this time, if you've guessed by now, Chucky's feathers are all ruffled, and Chucky has lost a song, and Chucky has lost his feathers. Chucky has lost his beauty. That's how life is sometimes. You are sucked in, blown apart, and washed out, sucked in, blown apart, and washed out. But the only thing that will take you through is you knowing yourself and being absolutely resilient as an individual and fighting the good fight and ensuring that you go beyond the call of your duty and ensure that you make yourself 
an individual that makes a difference because the world that you are stepping into, the workplace that you're looking into in the future is a place that needs people who will stand for each other and who will show to people that, yes, I care about you. Skills, all this is important. Capabilities are important. But the world is looking right now. The kind of place that we're going to step into is when we embrace humanity one more time. So on that note, whether you are sucked in, blown apart or washed out, remember, never, 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 never give up. I thank you for this opportunity. Radbara University, Amit, thank you so very much. I turn this over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for a very, what can I say? No words to say because suck in, blow up and wash out. It's really good, sir. The way you ended the entire uh, webinar, I really admire it. The way you say suck in, blow up and wash out. Really good, sir. Essence sir, really good. I'm audible. You are. Thank you. You are. And uh, before going towards, and I will just summarize few words and uh, not summarize each and everything of Essel, sir. But he started with human relation, human resource and human relations, leadership development of an organization where we have to develop leaders also. Then every life matters at the work, workplace. Sir, on this part, I have a question from you, from my end only, not from the viewers. You said every life matters at the workplace. Yeah. How you see the changes in the past, before COVID and after COVID? Because it's come uh -huh. all the all the pandemic. After this pandemic, I think everything is changed in our lives. Our working style, as you shared, the mm -hmm. online processes. Before you 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 only shared that you used to do a one to one uh, webinars in the. Uh, different places, HR conclaves. Now you are doing mm -hmm. a webinar online, on air. That's right. That's right. So, now how you I feel? Mean, yeah, sir. Every life matters is something that we knew, but to a large extent, we never, we never practiced it. Humanity is such that we have to face some calamity in our lives for our eyes to open up and to relook what we know. And I call this back to basics. If you look down the barrels of history, you will see one thing for sure. Time and again, there has been revolutions. People have come up and said that every life matters. But when we get so lost in I, me, myself, that we lose the very importance of this great thing. So I think this is COVID is an opportunity that has brought all of us back to say that, hey, shant ho jaiye thoda sa. Thoda sa thher jaiye, dheeme ho jaiye. Huh? Come back, step back, take a look back and see that every life matters. So. And it's just not a statement. I think each of us have to live that. That's when the real difference will come. So one question comes from the Facebook from my uh, student. He is talking. Uh, he just want to know. You said about the progressive lens in life. One should have a progressive lens. He want to know ki how a student uh, because he is going to be passed out this year only, and how a fresher can use this progressive lens for creating his own called and the productivity in the workplace. OK, wonderful. Good question, young man, whoever you are. Let me tell you this. Uh, any fish can swim along the tide. It takes a fish with the backbone to swim against the tide. If you study the life of a fish called salmon, you will see there are a lot of uh, business cases that are there. There are a lot of researchers done on that because that's the only fish that swims against the tide. My question is when you pass out, I want you to visualize like this your life. You are one fish and pardon me if you're a, a vegetarian, whatever you want to uh, visualize, you'd go ahead and visualize. But think about this. You are one among the many people that are passing out and will be coming out of the portals of your college. When I say progressive means think not just for that one campus interview that you want to clear. Think about where do I want to go after I step out of my college? What kind of a job do I want to take? What is my dream job? Uh, and I know that we fought so much for dream company day one, day zero. Put all that aside. 
become selfish about your life and ask what is it that i want to achieve out of my life then make small steps to achieve it go ahead pursue that so for example you may be studying btech today but if you want to be somebody who works in the line of telecom what stops you from learning a little bit about cisco what stops you to get some you know some kind of a certification while you're still at college because that's progressive thinking saying that btech i will clear but i want to be a step ahead i want to think at least a year ahead two years ahead little drops make a mighty ocean thank you thanks i think uh, we received his answer uh, one question comes uh, from my bara university campus uh, hod of hm mr vikesh is asking sir you are talking about adaptability how you see the adaptability of freshers after post covid in hotel industry sorry which industry did you say hotel industry which because industry? he is the HP hotel, hotel industry. industry tourism okay yes, yes. well i i wish i wish i wish there was a there was a, some kind of a manual that talks about how to fight covid unfortunately the world has not seen this and if you're expecting me sir with due respect to dish you out an answer to say this is 1 2 3 4 what the hotels must do to survive i'm sorry i have to disappoint you i don't have it but one thing is for sure that all of us regardless of whichever industry you are from we are redefining the workplace so for the hotel industry if you have to do something which is and they are doing it you know whoever thought that jw marriott will be sending food at your place they never did that you were expected to go to the restaurant to eat so they are redefining the way they work and i think for the hotel industry to survive the one thing which is very important is they have massively to relook the way they do things for sure and that's true with any industry for sure you know i know that i have personal friends in the hotel industry who who really been through a lot and you know it's a very sad thing for them to see it but but i also know one thing for sure that for a tree to grow if i use an analogy for a tree to grow the soil has to be right the water has to be correct the sunlight has to be correct the gardener must spend time and there is no reason why the tree will not grow so when we do a little bit little by little doing the right decision making the right choices redefining our workplace then there is no reason why the industry will not live again thank you so sir i can tell one thing asin sir i uh, i live in greater order and nearest five star property is redison and is close to my heart also i used to travel uh, after this uh, lockdown one i got a call from mr niranjan shai he is a he is a uh, chinese chef he called me up amit ji how are you mala good bole everything is good bole you are not uh, coming to our hotel no issues bole sir if you require any food any liquor i can say openly anything from the hotel other than the stay we can provide you at your home yeah the way five star property i really got shocked mala uh, shahi ji really is it true bolta sir this is our new policy we can bring the food and the everything to your home as per your requirements this is really uh, after covid everything is changed you are very true so uh, one question uh, again from my colleague only he is asking about you you talked about risk taking at a, uh, uh, ability how matlab how one can take a risk because it's a post covid everything has changed and you are talking about the calculative risk yeah actually you are talking how? about the calculative risk yes so yeah you Kindly like you right this yeah Kindly so so amit <laughs> yes so i think when i say calculate if i if i will give you an example when i say calculate risk i don't mean going by emotions i mean harnessing your emotions just because i don't like something maybe today uh, and i know that in some industries where there are 30% salary cut 40% salary cuts what do i do do i get angry and leave the job no sir without a job in my hand but yes i will probably put myself still there and i will hold myself and i will say okay let me walk through this today at least i have a job and keep looking out 
and when the right time comes if everything meets together i will move that is ability as an individual to make a decision calculate your risk minimize your risk if i let my emotions come in place then i will say oh i i worked for 7 years with you you can't do this to me i'm going to walk out that's being foolish but if you calculate your risk and say little by little step one and to do this maybe my next job that i want to do i don't have the certification can i use the six months to get my certification and then pick up the job and get going it's not easy let me tell you it's not easy none of this is easy we because we've never walked this road before but none of this is impossible it is achievable it is doable thank you thanks sir so uh, i will take the last question from dr simmer she is talking uh, she want to know you talk about the culture yeah we have to bring back the our culture to our workplaces and you talked about we have to take care we, you talked about kindness also yeah yeah and how how we can do that because now the culture is totally changed because people are only i me and myself they used to say i do not know how to work she is asking how we can bring the changes and the culture change in the system absolutely brilliant question dr sima and i'm happy you had you you've asked this question because this is very close to my heart how can i bring this change one good individual impacts one good family one good family impacts one good surrounding one good surrounding impacts one good community one good community impacts one good probably city state village one good village impacts you are smart enough do the math yourself to understand it all begins with me i can't pass the act of kindness on somebody else's behalf i need to do it myself as far as and i can i can tell you one thing for sure for whoever has been kind whoever and i've seen it personally in my life when i was a young man there was somebody who was very very kind to me who took time to build my life and today i am here and my passion in life is to bring is to build young lives the saga continues what you receive you must also pass on but for you to receive you have you need to have walked that road and follow that step you know it's very easy i'll be very honest usually when we want to do something we do it for somebody that we think he can do it back for me but the challenge is when you do it for somebody that you think cannot do it back for you that's the litmus test and i was watching an episode of satyameva jayate there was this, and i'll and i'll close with that quickly there was one gentleman a young boy it's a true story in nagpur and i know because i lived in nagpur while i worked with tcs so i know this college hislop college there was next to the hislop college there were these young men absolutely notorious gang wars who used to play so when they and they were playing football with tin so the professor from inside the sports teacher sees them and says why are you guys playing they said come 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 uh, go get a football and come and if you play here then i'm going to give you 100 uh, so he said i'll give you 50 rupees so all the guys would play after the game is over he'll give them money 50 rupees and they are gone two days three days four days and now they're only coming for money take the money go then suddenly one day he says i'm not going to give you the football he says no but we want to play we enjoy playing he said but i don't want to give no no please give us okay then i will not give you the money he said okay then you take the football so he gave them the football they played the game it happened one day the second day they said are yaar maza aa raha tha le hey, tor paise chhod let's go and play the game let's enjoy so they started playing and they played 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 to the point when this came he started to speaking to this guy and let me tell you to cut the long story short this gentleman was featured on satyameva jayate because this young boy because he came in contact with his professor the professor taught him that living this kind of life because one day when they were playing the the opposite gang came and chased them he could not go to the police because the police is going to catch him because of all his crimes he could not go back to where he was staying because this gang will come and hit him so he had no place that's when this professor told him come with me to the police station go and you know uh, go and surrender yourself he surrendered today that young boy let me tell you came back he's not a young boy anymore he's a grown up man now went and 
uh, and and played football representing india for slum football in brazil and played in the world cup slum football and so when this professor was asked why did you do it his answer was very simple at least that 30 minutes i prevented crime in the city by pulling these guys together for 30 minutes together. i stopped crime in the city crime. see one act of kindness one seed that you sow you never know how it will germinate uh, do we have an immediate answer no but no. i am sure sometimes we see the results sometimes you will not see the results but the result will come for sure come thank you thank you sir but uh, there is a last question from my end being an again uh, <laughs> by heart i am a placement guy only who take care of the placement of the university uh, this is last question from my end how you see the scenario after post covid of freshers hiring in india well freshers hiring is not stopped as i see uh, i'm on I, you know since i am on the group of all our campus recruiters across india i see that freshers recruiting has not stopped there are a lot of companies already started off it's it's a very painful exercise for us managing that many students virtually and then getting the hiring manager to do the interview the documents going the timing it, it's it's very nightmarish for us but do i see the future one thing is for sure if you're going to think that with my plain btech degree or my plain mba degree i can just go get a job i'm sorry those days are over those days are completely over uh if in our case if i tell you we need to hire somebody we need to see that this guy is really interested in making his career and if this is the career he wants to make what is the investment he has done in his life so which is why i think continuous learning remember learning. i said about yes, yes uh, ability to manage keep on yourself inculcate that atmosphere of learning for your own self so pressure hiring is not going to stop the demands are going to uh, it's already there but and i see it can be changed but mode can be changed absolutely that doesn't matter a method will not change change a method will not change the hiring need will not change uh, and, and i'll tell you it's a, it's a huge thing uh, today we have forgotten about shaking our hands right we do yes, this sir. now yes sir it's an adaptability so we'll adapt to this new lifestyle of of virtual hiring as well thanks asan sir thanks sir okay. for uh, coming to the uh, with us at this chapter 5 uh, of my season 2 of webinar and i really appreciate my viewers also who keenly asked the questions also i think they had seen entire your show and thanks again asan sir for coming with us thanks sir this thank is you, mr asan rao thank you sir thank you this is mr asan rao the head campus sourcing india from british telecom india guys i think you had watched and seen what he talked about he talked about relationship uh, leadership uh, development he talked about adaptability he talked about risk management the calculated risk for the freshers he talked about support kindness to your colleagues in new workspace and the first and the foremost thing learnability you have to learn each and every day now and from this we end this chapter 5 on monday at 4 pm we are coming up with the season 2 chapter 6 the career opportunities in the media and entertainment industry post covid 19 thanks viewers stay tuned stay safe thanks take care bye good evening